Hey one, hey all, and as we kick off a new week and a new month, the month of May, my birthday month no less, we're going to continue looking at my collection showcase display by looking at or starting to look at the main display, the one that you guys see behind me all the time. We're going to begin at the very bottom and look at the bottom three shelves today in the latest Got Ba True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, baby, that's right, hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors NL, and the Autobot family. Have a look for me everywhere across social media. Not a hard man to find. Love interacting with you guys when I get the chance. And today is going to be part three, as I said, of the collection showcase. And I wanted to kind of do all of this sort of at once. But to make it sort of digestible parts, I figured maybe the best thing to do is chunk it up. So if you haven't checked it out yet, part one kind of covered a secondary display here in the house. And a few odds and ends, including my kind of DVD Blu-ray series collection. Part two sort of covered um, some, I almost want to say like extra miscellaneous characters in that, and I want to make sure to word this right, some of them are used for customs, some of them have been replaced, some of them will be replacements. So they're sort of just off to the side for now, and then we sort of began to dive into a little bit of the main collection. But not stuff that's on this shelf right now because I'm using it for other things or I just don't have the space to put it up there. Nevertheless, this is the crux of it. This is the, the kind of the main event of my display. The things that are um, kind of, you know, current and my current iteration and versions of the characters stay here. Because as you guys know, in order to control my limited space, I try to have one representation of a character. So we're going to do the bottom three shelves, which basically covers uh, some of the main Decepticons, we'll say. A lot of Decepticons, actually, on two of the shelves. And then the third shelf largely covers Season 3 Autobots. You'll see when we head over to, well, the shelf and take a closer look at some of these guys. Okay, so as you can see, we have everything on the first of the bottom shelves kind of out and sort of splayed out a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit easier. I'm not going to waste a ton of time here because I've talked about all of these guys on the channel and they've all had their own reviews. So, starting way over on this side, we have... Weird Wolf, along with his headmaster, of course. Uh, I don't even remember his headmaster's name now. Uh, we have Croc next to him. We have Skull Cruncher or Skull Smasher next to him, depending on which name you prefer. We have Transformers Prime Dreadwing. Uh, Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Clash Dreadwing there, I should say. I actually like that guy. I know he has like weird bird feet and stuff, and it's a bit of a weird plane mode, but there's a lot there to like. We have The Fallen in the back right now. It's one of the, in terms of official releases, it might be the only Fallen we have. Maybe that, now that I think about it, that Robots in Disguise one, I think it was Robots in Disguise, but uh, it'd be nice to get in it like an actual updated version of the Fallen, but you know what, I, I, that one's weird enough. I'm cool with it, I guess. Uh, next, kind of next to him, sort of behind him, sort of behind Thundercracker is my KO Nemesis Prime. What can I say? He was uh, a great deal from Sir Toys and affordable and he has die cast and he works great for Universal Collision. Of course, we have my custom Thundercracker there. We have, right up front, we have uh, Mind Wipe here along with Vorath. I always remember Vorath. I love that name. That was great naming. Uh, if we move over a little bit, we have my custom Siege Skywarp. Love the guy. Uh, we have my Siege Starscream. Love that guy. I, it's a mole that I have a bunch of times, and I, I love it every time. What else do we have here? In the back, another Headmaster. We have Ape Face back there. Um, He's got three great modes. Going between them is a bit of a bear and a nuisance sometimes. We have my Hegemon as Megatron. 
He has some custom work done on him as well. We have the two Duocons down front, that of course being um, I'm Flywheels. Um, Sky Tread, I think, is the name that they use for him, but I'm going to call him Flywheels. And Road Trap and Battle Slash, of course, gives us Battle Trap. Love Battle Trap. If we move over a little bit more, we have the Selects Nightbird. She has the I'm going to call them swords, the Energon swords that come with RC because I thought that they, that they matched her better. I have considered cutting the car pieces off of her because she didn't have an alt mode, but I haven't done it yet. I did see it done by, I think it was Lazy Eyebrow, and it looked really clean, looked good. Behind her, we have Barricade. Uh, up on the... I don't know what you call it. The extra stand that I guess I have there. If we move up just a little bit, you can probably see that we have a, one of the Shark Decons out front. Uh, he has some custom paintwork done on him. Uh, if I just take him out of it, you can see my custom Garbroil and Howlback next to him. Her? I don't even know. We have two of the MicroMaster lads out front. One of them is Growl. I can't remember the other dude's name right now. They're both, they're okay. They're not the strongest, but they're definitely not the weakest of the MicroMasters. Uh, Generations, Tankor. A lot of people give that guy a lot of flack for being small, but I like the mold. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, behind him, we have the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Lockdown. I kind of like the green on Lockdown a little bit better, even though it's a little bit of a weird, I don't know, uh, car mode, I suppose, like some weird detailing there. Scourge, in his hand, he has a custom uh, fracas already put there, or fracas if you prefer that pronunciation. And you may notice kind of down in the far back corner, we have not one, not two, but three of refractor or reflector, if you will. So that's everybody and everything on that shelf. We're going to put this back and we're going to get the second shelf out and do the same sort of thing. And we move from one shelf that's now been put back to the next one. And we're going to start way over here on the far end with Classics Universe Cyclonus. I still think it's the standard bearer for Cyclonus. I think that it's a fantastic Cyclonus. Some people have said, I'd like to have an update. I don't think you're going to get any better. I really don't. I don't see how you get any better. He's pretty fantastic, even by today's standards. And his light piping's gorgeous. Next to him we have... Arguably the best, if not one of the best, from the Siege line. That being Spinister. I have a custom hair splitter and a custom singe. I didn't... I managed to get Skywarp, but I didn't get the little Battle Masters with him. So I was fine with that. I, I can do a custom hair splitter. As far as singe goes, uh, he never came here first nor last. Never showed up. Uh, it's common here to miss the last waves. So what I did is I got a alternate and I done a custom job on him as well. So now I have both of them with Spinister. Uh, then we have one of the more recent additions to my cast of characters being Lord Straxus. Next to Lord Straxus, we have Shockwave, and in front of Shockwave we have Soundwave, and in front of Soundwave we have actually the Titans Return, Rumble, and Frenzy. I'll let you decide which is which. And they're still going to stand as my Rumble and Frenzy. They're better articulated. I like them better as Rumble and Frenzy, personally. We have Ratbat down there. We have Titans Return, over, uh, over Overboard, Overkill, uh, if you will, down there. It'd be nice if he was an actual cassette, but what do you want? We have In Behind... Uh, Astro Train there. We have the Titans Return Tidal Wave. A lot of people said uh, that they want a Commander class or a Titan class. I don't know if I want to spend a Commander class price or a Titan class price for a Tidal Wave. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to see it. Maybe Commander, arguably. I would not pay a Titan price for a Tidal Wave. Not a chance. He's not significant enough to me. Uh, I don't put him, as big as he is, I don't put him the same level as Metroplex and Fort Max and Scorponok and Triptychon and Omega Supreme. And I guess even Devastator, even though I don't think Devastator should have been a Titan either, to be honest with you. But that's another story for another day. We have the Titans Return Blitzwing. We have Bludgeon. We have Direct Hit and Power Punch right down front there. Then we also have... 
two versions of Dropkick. Uh, the car is definitely more indicative of the character from the film. We have Car Shatter. She's hot trash. I really want the plain one so I can have the plain one be her robot mode. I'll put the car one in car mode and just leave it there forever. Uh, behind Bludgeon, we have the other triple changer, uh, Octane. Behind Octane, I'm going to kind of grab that now. Behind Octane, we actually have the um, perfect effect uh, reflector set as camera mode. I was only going to keep one set of reflector and Starscream Wife said, well, I like both. I like the small ones for the camera mode because it's a smaller camera mode, but I like the bigger ones for robot mode because it seems to match the the scale better. So I kind of decided to keep both of them uh, because they are the epitome of mass shifting. We have Unique Toys, Mania King Vintage Color Edition. That is my Galvatron. A lot of people are shocked that I never handled the Titans Return Galvatron. I didn't handle the Titans Return Galvatron because I had this guy. I had no need for a Galvatron and wasn't interested in getting him. That's why I'm so excited about Super Megatron because it'll be my first opportunity to uh, kind of handle that mold and sort of see what's what. Then we can move up again to the... Uh, I, I, like, sh little shelving thing there. Uh, we have... Kind of in the back there, we have Clobber, who still has a Decepticon insignia and whatnot going on there and uh, fits in nicely. We have my three custom Legends-sized Seekers. I don't really have names for them yet. I'm sort of thinking about what to do with them. But we have a blue lad, a green lad, and an orange lad. Then you probably can't really figure out what is next to the Seekers there. Uh, but what we have is... A custom version of Enemy. A custom painted version of Enemy. We have Titans Return, Laserbeak, Titans Return, Buzzsaw. We have like a Ravage that turns into a uh, uh, the device label. There you go. Actually, I think it's a KO of the device label of Ravage. Uh, but it works as my Ravage. And that might be it there. Now, I did want to point out, because I forgot it from the first shelf, and I almost forgot it again here. I also have this. It is the Titan um, Zarek, Lord Zarek. It has the Scorponok head up here that's die cast. It came in one of those box sets. For now, it stands as my Zarek, uh, and he has appeared, he or he started to appear in Universal Collision, so we know that, you know, we're going to head somewhere with him, of course. You cannot imagine how excited I am because of that for the impending Titan Scorponok. And that leaves us with one more shelf along the bottom. And so we clue up the bottom by moving from Decepticons to Autobots. A lot of this is the Season 3 cast. Not all of it, but a lot of it. When we start way over on this side, we begin things with Titan's Return Perceptor, who I love. I adore that Perceptor. Yes, he's a little small, but like, I think he works so well and he looks so good. A few custom paint apps done on him. Behind him we have Sandstorm. I wasn't going to get him, but way back in the day when he first came out, Starscream Wife, who at the time was... Uh, I don't even know if she was Starscream girlfriend yet, but she thought the better of him and thought, you know what? No, man, he looks cool. You should get him. And I got him, and I'm glad I did. I, again, I said earlier that that Springer mold is stupendous. I love it as Sandstorm as well. Some people have said, hey, no, I'd like to have a Sandstorm that has a proper helicopter mode. Um, sure. Okay. Why not? Yes, this was stylized, but it's such a good mold that honestly, man, I let it pass. Next to him, we have the Siege Springer. Very G1. I definitely... Uh, done some custom work on him. Removed some of the battle damage. I painted over the yellow on his shoulders. Removing it from the chest was the hardest thing. What a pain that was. Uh, again, a great Springer. Whichever one you choose, I think you win. They're both good Springers. This or the Generations. If you're keeping the Generations, man, I cannot argue with you. 
Roadbuster back behind there. We're getting a movie, Roadbuster. I don't even know, but it might already be out in some areas. Uh, nevertheless, again, Roadbuster has, like, he has a lot of ratchets, but some of them function better than others. Uh, there's, and he had, like, stickers, which I found so strange at the time. But, like, I like them. But I also realize that there are certain issues with him. Then we have Impactor. Impactor is stupendous, spectacular. If you only get one uh, character from Siege, get Impactor. He is that good. And I had no connection to the character. I didn't even know who he was. I didn't remember him from G1 because I wasn't really into the comics. I'm certainly not into the more modern day comics. So I didn't even know who he was. And... I was at a point where I was really kind of fed up with a lot of what I was seeing, honestly, in the fandom and people bickering and arguing and stuff that I was getting really tired of it. And he, he alone reaffirmed my faith in the hobby that all of us love. Behind him, we have Titans Return broadside. A lot of people complain and say he's too small. I don't know. He's fine for me. I'm not that picky with him. Maybe, again, kind of like Tidal Wave, maybe a Commander class. I'm not getting a Titan class for broadside no way it's not worth it to me then we have uh my custom titans return hot rod a lot of people give that guy flack too but i like him i thought he turned out splendid and he has excellent articulation then we have my heavily customized cup and blur from titans return up to you if you like the the stock colors great if you went with the japanese iterations great i had uh arms from shapeways provided by uh knotted and they're great arms for cup really really uh good they're really affordable easy to paint i actually dyed the arms first and then i painted them after uh clear coded the whole thing i i don't know i did cup now, I love the Generations one, the earlier one, but I can't deny that the Titans Return one, I really like. I've done a lot of work with them. Uh, we have Highbrow in behind, as well as the Generations uh, Selects Hotshot, Cybertron Defense Hotshot, I think it is actually. I'm not a huge fan of that mold for Hound, but I, I, I'm fine with it for Hotshot. I'm not really that big into Unicron Trilogy, so this works for me. Is it stylized? from the model, yes. Do I see what they were going for? Yes. Do I understand why some people would not dig this as hotshot? Absolutely. It's good enough for me, but it's not gonna be good enough for someone who is really a big fan of Unicron Trilogy. Though I am glad to see some characters outside of G1 getting a little bit of love. As we turn this a little bit more, we can see that we have Chrome Dome, we have Hardhead, we have Brainstorm, we have who else do we have there? Uh, I, I think I said highbrow already. We have Rekgar, and then we have another Rekgar, but my plan is for the Combiner Wars Rekgar, I actually plan to kind of just revision him as a, a different Junkion. I don't know who. I don't even know if I'll actually change anything about like his face sculpt or anything like that. But the uh, Reveal of the Shield one, that's going to be my Rekgar. The other one will just be another Junkion. Then we have... Iron Tread, the little Micromaster, and of course, the bigger uh, Earthrise Ironworks. And I'm telling you now, Ironworks is fantastic. Some people say he shelf warms. Don't let him shelf warm. He is excellent, and we're getting the other Micromaster bases. I've already confirmed that with you guys Thursday night on the live show. And of course, we do have one of those trays here as well. So we're just going to move things here a little bit. And bring it up. And I'm going to try and get it in closer here for you guys. And we have the Titans Return. Skylinks, who I'm not going to lie. Uh, I Like, I like him, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm going to end up replacing him with the Commander. Maybe. I think that's the plan. Uh, but I, I, like, I like this one. And if you opt to keep this one and he's good enough for you, great. If you're a Legends collector, this is Skylinks is probably perfect for you. Uh, then we have Generations RC. I know we're getting a new RC. Um, she's going to have to be something special to get me to replace this RC because I think this one is excellent. So very well done. So I'm interested to see what the Earthrise one will be like, but I'm not necessarily sold on it. My custom wheelie down front. Next to him is the one throttle bot that I have being Chase, or most people will know him as renamed as Roadburn. And then we have two of the guys that were in the Alpha Strike Squadron 
pack from Amazon. That, of course, being the G2 clone Sideswipe, who I'm just going to call Lambor. I know that Lambor is like a Japanese name for Sideswipe, but I'm just going to revision him as a completely different character. This is the one to, like version of that mold I have. I'm not a huge fan of it. So having one copy of it is enough for me. And then we have, really, I guess a guy who by rights is a duocon here, but he's also two cassettes. I see what they were going for. Slam dance, right? It's slam dance, basically. Instead of him being kind of like two uh, cassettes, this time he's a, a, a tank and a plane. And like, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. It works out just fine for me. Whereas one cassette was named Grand Slam, the other cassette was named Rain Dance. This time around, it's a little bit different. Yes, the colors are reversed with his blue pants now being a blue shirt and his like maroon shirt being maroon pants. And this time around, again, the two components being the tank and the plane are named Grand Slam and Rain Dance. The plane, I think, is Rain Dance. And I think the tank, the lower body, is Grand Slam. Now that's the entire bottom shelf done. We're gonna next move things up a little bit and we have one two three more shelves to do next and we're going to do them much the same way so that you can see everything that's on them and here we are again as you can see by now uh the easiest way for me to sort of show things is to kind of take out the shelf and in the beginning of going up this series of shelves i sort of talked about a number of the characters, um, quickie reviews, so to speak, uh, and sort of give a few thoughts about what I like the best and the least. And of course, of course, we're going to sort of uh, do that as we move up the shelves. Granted, I try to expedite things a little more so it doesn't take too long. Nevertheless, for what you guys have seen so far here in part three or part one and two, for that matter, let me know. Let me know if. You know, I hit on some of your favorites, or if I like some that you just really can't get behind, or if you prefer, prefer another version of the character rather than the one that I have. You know, I love to hear from you guys. As always, thanks for coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donate link down in the description. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us at the live shows and the stop motions and the reviews and the countdowns and everything else. Don't forget, do not forget, somehow, someway, each and every day you do make a difference. And I look forward, man, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit. Either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.